You've probably seen one of these radios before, a kid's walkie-talkie on 27.145 MHz. You didn't need a license to use it, unlike CB radios at the time which you did. They were much lower power, much cheaper and operated on one frequency only. That frequency was cunningly between two CB radio channels so you could actually talk between this and a CB radio. However the receiver, a noisy super regenerative type, was sufficiently noisy and broad that it was often interfered with by CB radios. Radios like these were sold by Dick Smith Electronics for $9.95 as you'll see from the catalogue extract. One amazing thing about these radios, when you open them up, is how simple they are inside. Just four transistors, the audio stages are common to the transmitter as the AM modulator and the receiver as the audio amplifier. There's some pretty fancy switching in here. I'm not sure if the crystal oscillator is standalone just for the transmitter or whether it's shared with the receiver super regenerative detector. The on off switch, push to talk, crystal, audio transformer and there's four transistors and a couple of slug tune coils that you need to peak. If you want to know more about the insides of these sorts of radios have a look at the Talking Electronics website. That has several circuits for radios like this and you might even want to try and build one yourself. This is about the simplest radio modification possible. All I did was take out the old crystal, you can see it here, it's 27.145 MHz and put in the new crystal, 28.636 MHz. The new crystal is in a slightly smaller can to the old crystal but the pin spacings are the same, so it was really easy to solder in. The only other changes needed are alignment. The coil you see here, tuned by a slug, is the transmit output tank. The coil I'm pointing to now is the receiver. Both need to be aligned for peak performance on 28.636 MHz. To align the transmitter you just put the radio near a field strength meter and also have a receiver going as well and tune for maximum strength. Check its output on a field strength meter. Note the reading is maximum here because I've got the antenna of the field strength meter directly touching the antenna of the transceiver. Once you've peaked the transmitter for output, have a listen to the transmitted audio quality. In this case it's rather sharp, but it's reasonably punchy. That's a pretty good combination for a small walkie talkie. On the receive side, you power the radio up and you bring it near a 10 meter receiver, tuned to 28.636 MHz. If the receiver is set to AM, you'll hear a broadband hash. You should adjust this slug, that's the receive front end, to maximise the strength of that in the other receiver. Set up here is an FT817 tuned to 28.636 MHz. There's a small piece of wire in the antenna socket. Turn on the walkie talkie and there's a hash. That's the super regenerative receiver being picked up on the FT817. Once you can hear the hash in the FT817, if you can't try turning down to 27 meg to find it, then you need to peak it on 28.636 megahertz by adjusting the receiver front end. You do that with a small screwdriver, preferably insulated so it doesn't damage the slug, as ferrite slugs can be fairly fragile. You peak the slug in the receiver for maximum volume as heard in the FT817. That brings you pretty close to the receive's frequency. If you really want to optimise it, you then transmit a low level signal on the FT817, AM into a very small indoor antenna. Then go walkabouts with the walkie talkie and readjust the slug for peak reception.